Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 14. This is going to be my review, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so, my thoughts on this episode. I thought this episode had some good elements, but also I think it was kind of a sloppy mess. I thought it was... A bit stale, that's my main word. I would say it's a bit stale. It seems like we've done this over and over again and nothing really impactful came of this episode. It was sort of very similar to a lot of recent episodes. Although I have been liking Supergirl a lot this season, I obviously think season 1, 2 and 3 have been doing it much better than season 4. I think this is the season 4 slump. But, like I said, there's lots of episodes this season that I really like. But, yeah, I felt this episode sort of just lacked a bit and so let's go ahead and talk about the plot points in the episode what happened and you know we're leading up to episode 15 which is the Lex Luthor episode he's going to be back in episode 16 so I think that's something new to look forward to because it's going to be a different angle and then we've got Red Daughter coming like they've taken a long freaking time with that because they said that it's going to be a slow burn but this is a long slow burn because I'm guessing maybe Red Daughter comes in in episode 16, maybe when Lex finishes off, because I don't think Lex is going to stick around. So, that's March 24th, and that would be episode 16, so then we would have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we have seven episodes to build Red Daughter, and that's not a long time. So, I, I think it's risky, I think they've waited too long, but I'm really looking forward to her coming nevertheless. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the plot points and things I want to talk about in this episode. Okay, so at the start of the episode, we stop Menagerie, she's interrogated, and we get this kind of strange Nia scene. I wasn't totally on board with everything to do with Nia this episode. I think she had some good moments, but that first scene was a bit strange when she was going full on Batman and Supergirl stopped her. But yeah, that's just what I observed. And so Lockwood is attacked by the Elite as they try and assassinate him and they get away and so you get to see various scenes like this of them attacking each other and at this point I'm kind of like a bit confused as to why they're not trying to stop Ben Lockwood over stopping the elite it seems like stopping the elite is like the thing to do right now and I guess it, it makes sense on one level but on the other level like Lockwood as everyone keeps on emphasizing like Alex is working with him in this episode he's a murderer and you know the president oh my god that guy that guy needs to stop but anyway let's move on to talk about the next part of the episode so there's this ongoing thing with Eve and James throughout this episode and we'll get to the major like exclamation mark point of this episode in just a minute and so he's trying to get how to look into you know the accounts and so on because um, one of his employees keeps on asking about this source that she has and the fact that Lena's hiding something so yeah then we move on to the very end of the episode and James is freaking shot like what that came out of nowhere and that was a major plus for the episode because it was unsuspecting it was something different it was something new and why the hell was he shot I have no idea, I have no idea who killed him, and that is intriguing, and that is good storytelling, I'd say, and so was it, I guess, the Elite, was it, you know, Lex Luthor, who's coming through next episode, I don't think it was, but I'm guessing it has something to do with his photos, because his name was tagged on there, so it's someone who hates aliens, surely, so is it Ben Lockwood, who was it, and is James actually dead, obviously, we can theorized that he's alive but he looked very dead he had a lot of blood so what the hell was happening I have no idea but I'm excited to go on to actually look at that next episode because like what the hell great ending scene and so let's move on and talk about the hat so the hat again in this episode he seems like he's you know gone away but then it was actually a trick and it comes back around he's back and it's revealed he's a fifth dimensional being and he's friends with Mr. Mixia Spilalik which was a really nice shout out because we haven't seen him since season two and he was one of my favorites of that season like in terms of villains of the week so that was really nice again not the biggest fan of the hat obviously I have to say again 
the accent really kind of grates on me, but yeah, it was just amazing to hear that name, Mr. Mixie Spillick, or they said Mixie. Um, yeah, it was good, and they went into the Fortress of Solitude. I don't know how they found it, but they break in, and it's all part of this trick that they've orchestrated. And so they talk of a baby sun eater, and it's like a living bomb. And I thought that was interesting. There was like tentacles and stuff coming out of there, so it's some sort of alien. And Superman has obviously brought that in because I doubt Supergirl actually did that because it's probably been there a long time. We've never seen it, so I'm guessing it's Superman. But he had Wynn's belt on, which is a nice callback to last season when Wynn was developing those belts. One of the agents was killed, but then in the future, um, I think Brainy actually said at the end of last season that you know, it's used and it's really important technology. So that was nice to see that back again and a nice shout out to win right there. And so Brainy in this episode, he still has no Legion ring. It's presumably lost, but it's not anymore because, you know, Manchester's still alive at, as it's revealed at the end of the episode. And so Brainy sort of has a new look at life. And I really, really did like Brainy's speech in this episode. Not all the speeches sort of hit the point. They didn't all bang for me but Brainy's really did, and his new look at life, and how things change, and you know, he says El Mayara, which is stronger together in Kryptonian, I do believe, so, yeah, really nice moments with Brainy throughout this episode, and so, Supergirl wears her Kryptonian robes, and this excited me a lot, this was a massive plus, I really actually did like the March scene, I thought the March scene was very good, and I have to compliment them on that, and, including Supergirl like when she's in the air and then she comes down wearing her Kryptonian you know national or sorry planet I don't know how to say it like her planet's ropes yeah that's the way to say it but it was really amazing and it's a massive callback to Argo City because that was the first and only time we saw that so nice shout out to Argo to you know Allura to Monel to everyone who was on Argo at that time so I really appreciated some of these callbacks in this episode and like I said I'm really hoping for the 100th episode next season to sort of bring everyone back and you know it's going to be a sort of full circle that is going to come back around and I really do appreciate these little things that they implement. And so all chaos breaks loose at the protest and it's aliens versus humans and some people come together and you know by the end of the episode this one guy that has been specifically sort of focused upon actually turns and he turns into you know the good side and so I thought this scene was good and it was like a montage sequence of different people helping and you know fighting and it was that iconic song I totally forgot his name but it's like all around me yo familiar places that's one of the lyrics and so I have totally forgot it but it was a really nice addition and it sort of really just touched me and I'm sure it touched a lot of you guys as well but I have to say one thing I really am kind of a bit fed up of them saying roaches I think yeah it's a word that they use but I think they way overuse it and it's like oh you're a roach it's like kids speaking it's like I don't know, it just seems very childlike and it seems very kind of unnatural and I am kind of a bit tired of that and I don't know about you guys but I am. And so anyway, let's move on to the next bit. So they actually stop the Alien Amnesty app for now and it's all fine and good where the end of the episode ends off and so Alex and Kara, you know, they have the Danvers sister scene on the couch at the start of the episode talking about Ben Lockwood and actually not on the couch but, you know, with the Chinese food and so on and at the end of the episode that's when they're on the couch and we have this amazing scene of Kara and Alex talking together like how they stopped it and how everything is now and, you know, how she's a hero in her own right in a different way and yeah, so I'm still wondering when Alex is going to find out that Kara is Supergirl but it doesn't seem like it's going to be happening for a, a while. I thought it would happen very, very soon after they did that, but yeah. And so the Elite is gone for now, and only Manchester Black is left, because the Alien is sent to prison, Menagerie's in prison, the Hat's in prison, all in the DEO, which kind of acts as, like, one kind of ironic thing, I guess, because, you know, the, the President's, like, locking them up and stuff and whatever, but... 
yeah, so Manchester's out there, and John in this episode has this arc of how when he finds out he's alive, he's, like, full of rage. He's about to actually, like, kill him or, you know, brutally attack him, which he does, but he actually attacks a different person because Manchester tricks him, and so at the end of the episode, he's gone full-on, like, rage. Like, he's gone. And so, like I said, the best parts of the episode was definitely Kara in her Kryptonian robes and the march. I thought that was really well done. I like the montage. I really loved the ending with James when he got shot because it was just such a shocking moment. I did not expect that. Not at all. Not even the single bit. So I really appreciated the sort of surprise of that moment. And so this episode was... Again, I think it was a bit stale, definitely at the start and in the middle, and then it got, you know, a bit better when we headed towards the end of the episode with the march, and then with James's ending, which is just crazy. So, let me know your theories in the comments down below. Who shot James? Is James dead? I'm fairly sure it looks like he's dead, but we'll see next episode. So, anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.